with Real Southern Woman. We're still down here. Craziness. We're leaving early in the morning. Uh, Chris is watching the ball game. It was a beautiful day outside. He decided he was try to, would try his luck at fishing again. He did not do well at all. I think it has rained so much down here, the water is really muddy, and it's just not a good time to come down here and fish. He ran off with my tripod when he went fishing, and I didn't have it for my Bible study today. I tried to use my laptop, and I couldn't get the camera to work. So, I couldn't hold my phone. I didn't want to hold my phone the whole time I talked and try to do it that way. So, it's good to see y'all. I know the national championship is about, is that what you call it, Chris? Mm -hmm. The national championship is about to come on. We've got 40 minutes. I told him, I said, turn off, turn down that volume so I can talk my, uh, about my Bible study right quick. Um, today is January the 7th. Our study today is called The Faithful Witness. And I thought that's pretty appropriate yesterday since, I mean, since yesterday we talked about witnessing and how we should be bold to witness. And so um, that's kind of what this is about. I know a couple of y'all have bought this book on an uh, ebook and maybe even hard copy. So uh, hopefully you've already read it. And if you hadn't, that's fine too. It's just a short little, sweet, little simple Bible study. I'm drinking my nightly coffee. I have to say it's pretty nasty. It was some cheap coffee that Chris and his daddy bought the last time they were down here without me. And it tastes cheap. I'm telling you, when it comes to coffee, you get what you pay for, don't you? I mean, it's gross. Really. We already drank all our good coffee. And we're leaving in the morning, so we didn't go and get any more. Um, today, it says January the 7th, the faithful witness... The, the scripture comes out of Revelation tonight. It says, Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, he, him who loves us and released us from our sins by his blood. Um, this is Charles Stanley's study. So these are his words. I don't want to take credit for his um, studies. It says, if you have... If you ever want an idea of what God is really like, all you have to do is look at Jesus. Jesus is the exact representation of the Father's unconditional love, mercy, and presence. This is found in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. It says, He is God with us. That's found in Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. Before the incarnation... Is that how you say that, Chris? Mm -hmm. what, what is that supposed to mean, incarnation? Before he was born? Right. Yeah. Before Christ was born. I don't know why they just can't talk in plain Incarnate English. Like in the, like in okay, incarnate God means in God in the flesh. So before his incarnation, which is when he was born here on the earth, people could only catch a glimpse of the Lord through the law. The testimony of the prophets and his intervention in Israel's national situation. Sadly, they tended to view him as legalistic, distant, and full of wrath. Um, it says that Jesus gave his life so you could be liberated. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Sorry, I missed my place. It says, but Jesus said, who... He who has seen me has seen the Father. So when we read about Jesus forgiving sins and healing the sick, comforting those who suffer, we see an incredible picture of who God really is. Jesus gave his life so you could be liberated from everything that enslaves you. That is who your loving God is. So, trust him with whatever is troubling you. Certainly, he provides everything necessary so you can live the abundant life he created you to enjoy. That comes out of Romans 8, verse 32. And um, he always has a little short prayer line that he 
writes down, and it says, Jesus, thank you for making such a sacrifice to show me who you really are. Amen. And uh, he has two little things he does that with. And then the next one says, my hope is in Jesus because he is God and he loves me. So I hope you got a little something out of that. Um, I, I didn't read much scripture like I did yesterday. Let's see. Let's go back to... John 14, 9. I'm going to look that up in the Blue Letter Bible, and we'll read a little bit of that, because I, like I, I like to read a little bit of the Scripture. So let, let me look that up right quick. If you don't have a Bible handy, and you got a computer handy, Blue Letter Bible is a wonderful source. To go in, you can see any version of the Bible. You can even uh, compare the versions of the Bible, if you'd like to. Um was it John? I think it was John 14. So I'm going to type that in. It's going to come up. No, that's not what I wanted it to do. with, we all like this part, let not your heart be troubled, you believe in God, believe also in me, in my Father's house are many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way, you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And then he goes on to say, uh, because he's letting them know that they're not recognizing who he is. Uh, he says, if you had known me, you should have known my father also. And from henceforth, you know him and have seen him. So he's letting them know that when they look at him, they're looking at God. Uh, because there is one. They're like one you know, being, the Trinity. The Trinity is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? So he's getting on to them and letting them know that he can't believe as long as they've been standing by him, walking with him, seeing all the things he's done. Um that they still can't see who he really is. So he's letting them know that if they, they're looking at him, they're looking at God. And uh, that, of course, was what the Pharisees didn't like. They didn't like him calling himself God, and they thought it was terrible, and that's one reason they uh, killed him, because they didn't believe it. But they were so prideful in their ways, it was hard for them to see past the law and what they'd always been used to seeing. And um, they just they just couldn't open their eyes and see the truth. Um, I hope y'all are having a good night. I'm not sure if you girls, I know I have a couple of guys that uh, watch the ball study. But I'm not real sure if y'all are football fans or not. Now, um, when they get high enough in something like this to where they're in a championship, I will... Sometimes watch a little bit of it. I do have a little bit of work to do, so I'm not sure how much I'll watch. Um, but if y'all are big football fans, I hope the team you want to win wins. I'm not sure. It's Alabama versus who, Chris? Clemson. Clemson? Mm -hmm. Where are they from? You know, man. South Carolina. South Carolina. See, I don't even know. Clemson, South Carolina. Y'all probably think, good Lord, that woman. 
Yeah, my daddy raised me to not like football. I have to say that because my daddy never liked football. My mother loved football. So if you're from Cedartown, believe it or not, my daddy was not a football fan. My daddy did not agree with football. He thought that a young man should think more about his future and his body and his brain than to hurt himself playing football and to give up so much for a game. So he was totally against football, and my mother loved it. She watched all the football games. Now that she has dementia, it's hard for her to understand the plays. She gets aggravated. So she don't watch it like she used to. I believe last year I actually uh, got her a better um, cable package just so she could watch this game. Wasn't that last year? And... Uh, but this year, I don't think she'll be watching the game. She's not thinking all that well. But now my daddy probably is like me, and he'll watch it once they get this high up just for the fun of it. But he really is not a big football fan. Um, and I never was either. And Chris was a football coach. When we first got married, it liked to kill me. I'd go out to them games. And, I mean, it was fun to watch them and all. But when them boys would get hurt, y'all, it just, I couldn't hardly stand it. I, I really had the hardest time when they got hurt thinking about I just I just didn't like it um, but I hope that um, Alabama does good tonight if you're from South Carolina I hope your team does does good I don't really care who wins but I know Chris wants Alabama to win um, y'all have a wonderful night let's say our prayers I'm gonna finish this nasty coffee that I made be uh, because if it were to get the least bit cold it's really gonna be bad you know and uh, <clears throat> I if y'all got anything cool to tell me, y'all can tell me. Um, I hadn't got all dressed up for y'all today. Let's say our prayers, y'all. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for um, being able to be here and be in a country that's free to where we can watch this football game. We pray for the guys that are in this game that they don't get hurt because it is scary to me. Uh, be with us and help us be a good witness. Help us have the right spirit. Help us take time out for you during the day. Um, and Lord willing, we'll be back here tomorrow. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a good night. Love ya.